In this Python beginner tutorial, we will build a memory game in Python together. The computer will generate a sequence of five numbers, and after five seconds, it will clear the screen. Then the player will have to guess the sequence of numbers. Let's start by creating two variables, sequence length, that we use to define the length of the sequence we have to guess, and max number to define the maximum value of a number in the sequence. We set sequence length equal to 5 and max number equal to 10. Create an empty list called numbers. This is the list where our program will store the sequence of numbers to be remembered. The first Python construct we will use in this program is the for loop. You will use the for loop to generate the list of numbers to be guessed. At each iteration of the for loop, the Python program will generate a random number and then we'll add that number to the list of numbers to be guessed. The range function allows to run the for loop in order to generate a sequence of numbers with the length we defined, in this case 5. As I said before, at each iteration of the for loop we need to generate a random number. To generate a random number in Python you can use the random module. Line 9 of the code generates a random integer number between 1 and 10. Then, in line 10, we use the list append method to add the number at the end of the numbers list. This is the sequence of numbers that we will have to remember as part of the game. Let's confirm that the code we've written so far works well. We will use the print function to see the value of the variable numbers. Let's test the program we have written so far to confirm that it generates a list of 5 random numbers between 1 and 10. The next step is to give the player 5 seconds to read the numbers before clearing the screen. We use the print function to tell the user that the screen will be cleared in 5 seconds. There are two things we have to do in this part of the program. First of all, the program has to wait for 5 seconds. And to do that, we will use the sleep function part of the time module. We will also use the OS module to clear the screen. Let's test our program so far and confirm that it works. You can see that the screen is cleared correctly after 5 seconds. Now that the screen has been cleared, it's time to ask the player to provide the correct sequence of numbers. To read the user input from the keyboard, you can use the input function. The input provided by the user is stored in a variable called guess. The next line of code, line 20, requires a more advanced knowledge of Python. For now, the only thing you need to know about this line is that we are converting the input of the player into a list of integers. We are doing this conversion because this allows us to compare the guessed sequence, that is a list of integers, with the numbers list that is also a list of integers. At the end of this tutorial, we will break down line 20, so I can show you exactly how it works. So for now, the only thing you need to know is that we are converting the input of the player into a list of integers. Let's print the value of guest sequence to confirm that it's in the right format. We are expecting a list of integers. You can see that the value of guest sequence is correct. Once again, guest sequence is the sequence of numbers that the player provides and that has to match the initial sequence of numbers generated by the Python program. In the last part of our program, we use an if else statement. 
An if-else statement is also called a conditional statement. In the if condition, we compare the values of guest sequence, that is the sequence of numbers provided by the player, and the list numbers, that is the initial list generated by the Python program. If the two lists are equal to each other, we print the message that's correct. In a if-else statement, the code inside the if branch is executed if the condition is true. If the condition is not true, we execute the code in the else branch of the statement. So in this case, if the variables guest sequence and numbers are not equal to each other, we print the message that's incorrect, and then we show the correct value of the sequence. Let's test our Python program and confirm that it works well in both scenarios. In the first and second runs, the player provides the correct sequence of numbers. In the third run, the player provides an incorrect sequence of numbers. As you can see, the program is working well. As I promised before, I will tell you more about line 20 in our code. If you remember, line 20 converts the input of the player into a list of integers. To understand this line of code, open the Python shell. Then use the input function to get a sequence of numbers from the player in the same way we are doing in our program. In this case, I'm providing the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that, as you can see, are stored in the variable guess as a string. You can see this is a string because of the single quotes at the beginning and at the end. Our goal is to convert this string into a list of integers. First of all, we use the split function that converts the string into a list of strings. You can see that this is a list because it starts and ends with square brackets. And you can see there is a list of string because each element of the list is surrounded by single quotes. So each one of these elements is a string. What we want instead is a list of integers. So what else we have to do? We can use the map Python built-in function that goes through each element of the list passed to it, in this case, guess.split, and converts each element into an int. So the first argument we pass to the map function, in this case, the int function, is applied to every element of the list. Here you can see that the map function returns a map object. But as we said before, we want, as a result, a list of integers. So the next step is to apply the list function to the object returned by the map function. This can be a bit tricky to grasp if you are just starting with Python programming. So if needed, go through this part of the tutorial again. You can see that after passing the output of the map function to the list function, we get back a list of integers. This is the list of integers that in our program we compare with the numbers list, that is also a list of integers. If you have any questions about this Python program, feel free to write them in the comments. Also, if you learned something in this Python tutorial, like and subscribe, so I can continue creating more videos for you. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video, and until then, happy coding!